Hey everybody and welcome to our beginner series for iOS, Apple's mobile operating system for iPhone and iPad. If you're new to the electronic armory, we have tutorials on all things electronics, from native mobile development, software engineering, electrical engineering, and everything else to arm yourself in the digital world. Be sure to check us out at electronicarmory.com and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great tutorials on all things electronic. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on the Swift programming language and introduce you to Swift classes and a concept called polymorphism. Polymorphism, in short, is the ability to inherit functionality from a parent class and morph that behavior in a child class. The example for this video will start to develop a dungeon role-playing game complete with a goblin and dwarf, non-player characters. So let's get started. We're going to start this tutorial off in another playground. So create your own playground, and this is the initial screen that you should see. I'm going to go ahead and delete this line and start off with our class decoration. To do that, we start off with a keyword class, and we're gonna name our class, and we're gonna name our class non-player character. And close it in empty parentheses, and this is our declaration for our class. Now this isn't very useful without members, so let's add some members now. Our non-player character has an attribute health and another attribute power. Xcode is going to complain about our class because these variables are not initialized. We can solve this in one of two ways. We can initialize it on this line here and give it a default value, say zero, or we can create an initializer. Let's do the latter. To create our initializer, we start off with the init method, empty parentheses, and empty method body. This will create what's called a default initializer. Here, we can give initial values to our health and power attributes. Okay, and so once Xcode runs that code, everything's fine. Let's create one more initializer so that we can pass a health and power value into that function and create a non-player character with an initial health value and initial power. So to do that, we create another init function, but this time, instead of empty parentheses, we pass in some parameters. In this case, health and power, both of which are ints. Create an empty body with curly braces. So we have parameters health and power, but these have the same names as our class members. So to distinguish between them, we have to use the self keyword to denote that we're talking about the instances members of health and power rather than the parameters. Here, let me show you what that looks like. So in order to reference the health for the class instance, we do self.health and set that equal to the parameter health. My cursor is on the second health. You can see that it underlines the variable name as well as the parameter that we're passing into the init function. This is a great way to show that this particular variable is referring to that definition. If we move our cursor over to the self.help, you can see that it's underlined and the other health members that are underlined are namely the one that we declared in the class and this other one that we've initialized in the other init function. In this respect, this is the same as the self.health but we don't necessarily need to declare self.health in this case because the compiler knows which one it's talking about. When it becomes a little bit more ambiguous like this, then we do have to define self. Okay, let's set our default power now. Now that we have our initializer defined, both our default and one that takes parameters, let's define a function to go along with our non-player character. So if you remember from our previous video, we start our functions off with the func keyword with the name of our function. In this case, our function is going to be called attack. So here's our attack method, and it's not gonna do very much right now, but what I want it to do is pass back a string so that the playground can output this value. So to return a value from a function, we do dash greater than as kind of an arrow, and this is going to return a string. And inside the body of our method, we're going to say return attack from non-player character, okay? And this is the initial definition of our class. Obviously, this is a very basic example, but let your imagination run wild in what you can do with classes. For our next step, I'm going to introduce you to polymorphism. And the best way to do that is to show you an example of that. So we're going to declare another class, namely goblin. So let's do that now. Again, this is a class, so we're gonna use the keyword class, and we're going to call it goblin. 
Now we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of starting our curly brace to define the body of our class, we're going to use a colon, and this is going to tell Xcode that we want to inherit the abilities and the functionality in the above class, non-player character, and include those in the goblin. In our example, a goblin is a type of non-player character. Now let's stop right here and show you what these classes allow us to do in code. So down at the bottom here, I'm going to create an instance of the non-player character class and store that in a variable called non-player character. To create an instance of the non-player character, we simply call the class as if it was a function. Once we instantiate this properly, Playground will output the non-player character on the right here. If we take a quick look at this, it'll show us we have a few options here. So namely our health is equal to zero, as well as our power. Now let's include this in the line of code underneath here to get a better example. Now if you remember, our non-player character has a health and power that we can actually access and change. So let's do that now. Non-player character use the lowercase method because it's the instance, not the class name. And using dot notation, we can do dot health and set that equal to something else, say 100. Known player character, dot power, and maybe set this to something different like 20. After Playground runs our code, we can take a look at how this mutates our instance. So health is now equal to 100, and power is still equal to zero on that first line. If we go down to the second line and do a quick look on that line after execution, we can see that the health is 100 and the power is 20. Now let's include the results underneath this line of code. Okay, so now you can see that when we instantiate our non-player character using the class and the empty parentheses, which corresponds to our empty initializer, you can see that our health and power is zero. If instead we wanted to use the initializer with the two parameters, we can use those two parameters here and set our power and health equal to something different. We can pass in our different values for health and power here, but the easiest way to go about that is actually to delete these parentheses, start the parentheses again to bring up the autocomplete, and select our initializer with the health and power already selected. So hit enter on the autocomplete, and it'll allow us to enter in these parameters. Now don't worry if you get an execution error like I just did, it just means that the code didn't compile properly, and that's fine because we're not done editing yet. So on our health, we're going to put in 20, and hitting control forward slash, we're going to cycle to the next placeholder, and our power is going to be, let's say, 15 in this example. I'm going to hit the right arrow to complete our end parentheses. And now you can see that it's used our initializer that has our parameters and our health starts out at 20 and 15. And then of course, later on in our code, we set it back to 120, which you can see in the output here. Okay, so classes are a nice way of collecting a whole bunch of different attributes in one object and then mutating that object. Now we can create multiple instances of our non-player character. But let's see how Goblin works with these parameters. Go ahead and delete this non-player character code here and replace it with a new Goblin variable. So let Goblin equals goblin. Let Playground execute that. And we're going to add that output right below this line to see what its values are. Okay, so goblin, again, uses our default initializer, and so its health and power both equal zero. Now let's look at our attack method. If I use goblin, and make sure it's the lowercase version here, dot attack, I can call that method. However, the output currently is attack from non-player character, as you can see here on the right. But this is a not just any non-player character, this is our goblin. And so how do we mutate or morph the behavior of this function in order to better fit our goblin behavior? Well, we need to override this attack method to better handle the behavior for our goblin. So to do that, we have to rewrite the attack method, but we have to let Xcode know that our attack method inside our goblin body is an override of the parent attack method. So what does that look like? Well, it's pretty simple. We just use the override keyword and then start our function. Now our function declaration has to match exactly with the parent. So again, this has to match that exactly. And now it's expecting a return value. So hitting control forward slash will highlight our placeholder and we're going to return something slightly different. Attack from goblin. Now if you look below, I didn't change any of this code. Our goblin.attack, the output for that is now attack from goblin. Let's look at one more example. Inside our goblin class, we're going to add a new member 
and we're going to call this weapon skill. And this is going to be an integer. Now again, Xcode is going to complain because we don't have an initializer that handles the initialization of our weapon skill variable. We might pretend that the goblin, when we initialize it, doesn't actually have a weapon skill, and we don't want to write a whole initializer just to handle this one variable. So we can actually set a default value in line here. So when a goblin is created, it will always have a weapon skill of zero until we change it later in the code. Now, if we look down to our output here, we can now see that we have a weapon skill set to zero. Now, these properties don't go back to the parent class. So in other words, I don't have the ability to say non-player character dot weapon skill equals, say, 20. Xcode will complain about it because our non-player character class does not have a member weapon skill. However, if we change this to goblin, Let's cut this, paste it down below goblin, and change non-player character to goblin. Again, lowercase. You can see that works just fine. If we scroll down, the output looks like goblin, but that's just the class that it's showing. So if we take the quick look, you can see that our weapon skill is now 20, and our health and power is still 0, 0, because we use that default initializer. And again, we can use the initializer with the parameters just by typing in those parameters here. Hit the escape key while in the parentheses, and it'll bring up an alternative initializer. Hit enter, and now you have the health and power parameters that we can input. And again, Xcode will say that there's a bad exception here, and that's fine for now. Just type in your health, let's say 66, control forward slash, and 55 is going to be my power. Let Xcode run that. Now our goblin is initialized with health of 66, power 55, a weapon skill of zero, we use the attack, which is going to attack from the goblin, and the goblin, if we add this output to the bottom of this code, we can now see our weapon skill is 20. I hope you found this tutorial on classes and polymorphism in Swift useful. If you'd like to see more iOS tutorials, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below with any questions you may have. Be sure to check us out at electronicarmory.com, hit us up on Facebook. For more tutorials on native mobile development, iOS, Android, software engineering topics, electrical engineering, and everything else to arm yourself in the digital world. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.